Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the final study of this week's presentation. As we return where we left off yesterday, as we consider other points, shall we ask our Heavenly Father for his guidance and his direction so that we may more clearly understand that which he would have us to know at this time? Shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we come before you today, we ask for your direction so that our minds may be open to understand what you would have us to understand at this time. There are many things that we have been examining that can be confusing, but we know that when we come together in faith, when we ask sincerely to understand that you will open these words so that our minds might more clearly understand that which you would have us to know. Please send your angels to protect us wherever we are. May your spirit open our minds. May our hearts be ready to receive all that you would have us to receive at this point. I thank you for those that are joining in this meeting. I ask for your blessing upon them. Direct us now. Show us, Father all that you would have us to understand. May your will be done, and may we more perfectly reflect your character. For this, Father, we thank you. For this, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we were leaving off yesterday, Daniel 12, verse 11. And as it states, and from that, from the time that the daily shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up. There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Now, Smith, in setting aside the seven times, the 2520, could not understand or see the division between the daily and the abomination that maketh desolate. He would allude to some of this, but he was very careful to never put it together as one contiguous period or even two periods of 1,260 days. Now, Smith. May yes. I Go ahead. Ask, ask a question? Um, sure. Yeah. I'm just thinking of it again. Um, you, Saying he was careful not to put those, the 1260s together. Are you thinking that he knew both of them then and just didn't, uh, walked around it? It's very difficult to not put these two periods together. We have accepted and have looked at this study that Hiram Edson had addressed where the period of the 2520 began in 723 B.C. and ended in 1798. Smith is being very specific in taking his 1260, as he presents it, as beginning in 538. And we're about to go into his explanation of that. Now... Okay. Now, the question, um, when did Uriah Smith become an editor of the Review and Herald? I believe it was sometime about 1860. Okay. So, now now he's often like the associate editor. Correct. Um, Correct. And then we know in 1864, uh, when that article was written, um, talking about the Leviticus 26, wherever the date is, January um, 24th, I think, or January 26th, anyway, in 1864, um, that people think James White wrote. Uh, he was he was he was just the acting editor. James White had name was still on the masthead as as editor which is why it shows up as James White wrote the article. So he would have been 
1856, he wouldn't have been involved. He might not have seen Hiram Edson's articles or may not have been as familiar with them. Well, I'm saying that Smith was associated prior to 1860, that he had to be yeah. building a relationship with the whites before they would trust him enough to come in as an associate editor. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, you know, did he read those articles by Hiram Manson? I mean, we don't know. We can't ask him, but I, I would think he would have he would have known about them. And and also the question is, would he have known how William Miller looked at Daniel 12, verse 7? Uh, see that as referring to um, the daily. Now, of course, William Miller didn't put it together either in the sense that he didn't realize uh, there was the two 1260s just making up the 2520 for Northern Israel. Yeah, so 1855. It says here Smith was editor from 1855 to 1861. So he would have seen, he would have been the editor when Hiram Edson's articles were published. Um, but it, it, to me, it, it's rather, um, you know, what, what I've said before is that I believe that the 2520 was hidden from them. You know, it's like I don't think that there is a conscious effort on his part to not understand, uh, and, and, and I think that this is, is true all through that history. Many people would see the 2520 on the 1843 chart and it just not click. And I remember when I first started studying the daily, uh, the pioneer view of the daily, so that would have been in 2007, somebody, what well, was the Charmans, uh, they gave me a copy of Jeff Pippinger's article dealing with the daily. Right. And I didn't understand it. Like, I just thought, you know, what is this? Like, what is it talking about? It just didn't, it didn't make any sense to me. And I don't think it's because, you know, Jeff didn't explain it well or anything. It, it's just, sometimes when a person doesn't see something, they don't see it. But once you see it, then you see it. Right? Looking, I know that's uh, looking. Looking back, what what yeah. was it that you didn't understand about the whole David? idea? You understood of, something, the, didn't you? Yeah. Well, you know, even though he would talk about the two desolating powers and, and and the pioneer view, you know, I was looking at Daniel chapter eight, you know, and I had done you know um, lots of presentations on Daniel chapter eight. I knew Daniel chapter eight, I thought, you know, inside out, um, which I didn't I didn't understand hardly any of it. Um, but, you know, I've been studying Dan chapter 8 as a Seventh-day Adventist, you know, for years. And, but once I saw it, then it was just like this huge revelation. Like, now it made mm -hmm. sense. Now I understood. What did you think the daily was? Well, the daily time. was Christ's heavenly ministry, right? That's mm -hmm. what was taken away, right? That's the, 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 what the church had taught. That's what, because, you know, I'd read. Mm -hmm. uh, the Daniel and Revelation uh, Committee's, um, you know, theological papers on that, but they tried to explain it. I'd written a paper on it in university, but I knew that there there was something wrong, but I could never figure out what, because it just didn't make sense to me. I couldn't, even, even the correct view, still had some problems with it, mm -hmm. but I would sort of, you know, mm -hmm. use a little bit of hand-waving to, to get over the problem. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but once I saw it, it was like, this is huge. Right? The 2520 now brings together a Daniel chapter 8, so I can understand the 2300 days as a portion of that great prophetic period, with the 70 weeks as a portion of the 2300 days, both a different portion of the same great prophetic period. And, and now it made sense. And, and so now we had you know, two 1260s, Daniel 12, verse 7, now makes sense. Um, the scattering and then the treading underfoot, you know, for the papal power from Daniel 7, 25, and then, of course, uh, Revelation chapter 11, and then chapter 12 as well, dealing with the 1260 there, again, being the papal power. It, it, it all just came mm -hmm. together. It was like all of these pieces of the puzzle of Adventism fell into place. 
with the 2520. And that's why it was so disappointing that people, instead of trying to understand it, people were were arguing against it, um, you know, in such a, a frivolous way. I mean, it was all about is the seven times in Leviticus 26, uh, you know, intensity or is it uh, a, a lot duration? Of, a lot of, a lot of, yeah, you know, a lot of mocking and sarcasm and and plain stopping of ears. Um, yeah, it represents yeah, representing 20, people 20. as heretics. And and what yeah. I could never see is what what was the danger of the twenty five twenty. You know, as a doctor, you know, character of God, you can see the 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 danger in that, right? Because you're going to deny a bunch of biblical text and spirit of prophecy statements as mm. you know. Right, you, you're denying the truth, or you know, anti-trinitarianism, where it leads, or these days the directions that it leads, because you have to say, well, Ellen White didn't understand certain truths, and we understand those truths now. Or the same with something like Lunar Sabbaths. You can yeah. look at all of these different errors, um, Shepherd's Rod, um, and you can see you can see why those are uh, dangerous errors. But I could never see why the 2520, in and of itself, um, was something that anybody should oppose. Right? As you know, well, um, I, I because do there's understand all kinds of why. Views. I have a sort of explanation for that. Okay. Why they why they rejected it. it? It looking at the big picture, Satan knows about it, so he sees that the light of the truth coming ahead because he knows the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So, so what I see has happened, you mentioned shepherd's rod and there's so many, so many Mm -hmm. as an advent, you know, we've been around the church long enough to see them come and go. And, and what, what that is, is a strategy of Satan, I believe preparing the minds Mm -hmm. to reject the light when it comes all this. It's just another, one of the elders slammed his fist on the table and he said about the 25 21 we were meeting slammed his fist on the table this is just another way to go texas you guys are going off to and he was my friend i was shocked Mm -hmm. so you know that that's what i think that's an explanation for why people reject it speaking about the daily if i may sorry Dwight, Mm -hmm. i don't want to hijack it well you're fine Okay. No, this is good. Uh, so, speaking about speaking about the daily, I remember thinking the same thing, but I had not studied it. I read it, but I had not studied it. And I had heard this idea, and it kind of sounded right. But the first time I did study it was 2004, actually, in the what's that forum we used to go? Uh, it was a great controversy site or something. Anyway, with, yeah, with Larry something. Uh, Larry Lesher. Pastor in yeah. the north. No, 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 no. The pastor in Northwest U.S. I can't Larry. think of his last name right at the moment. But. Yeah, it'll come to me. Anyway, but that's when it came up in that forum. Mm. And I thought, oh, they're saying this, they're saying that. I, I really don't know. And I figured it out. Just on my own, looking at things, and I made my own decision. And yeah, it was paganism. So that was that was that was something for me actually. Back in the day when I had a brain. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and and for me it was well, the twenty five twenty made me understand. It. So originally, when the daily was always presented, if it had been presented as you know the twelve the twelve sixty for paganism and twelve sixty for fatalism, then I would have understood it. But because it was sort of the way that these arguments are is they're arguing over some little detail without understanding the whole picture. And that was the problem with the twenty five twenty, you know, is that people were arguing over like, you know, uh Sheba in Leviticus 26 and you know basically the argument that's in that article in uh, January of 1864 so that's 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 where they frame the whole argument around and 
yeah. instead of trying to understand the whole thing. But I think you're right in that all of these different errors sort of steals people's hearts and minds to look at anything else. So they just saw this as another error. And and then also we had, you know, certain characters in, in Canada who were agitating the 2520 in in opposition to the church. So many of the people also who were accepting the 2520 were people who were opposed to the church in some way or other already. So so it wasn't yeah. happening yeah. sort of within the church organically as as people just starting to try to look at something. It was something coming from the outside is the way that it was viewed, uh, attacking the church. But I wasn't that way. Yeah. You know, this is no. not my name. But, you know, for people like Cabo, they just saw what, sprink- what he was doing. They, they just saw sprinkles of, of fanaticism. They saw sprinkles of fanaticism in the 2520 uh, study or yeah. awakening or light or whatever. But it wasn't. Well, me too. It, I and they took it as a whole. They attributed it to to everybody, or they saw a danger in it from it because of that. I don't know. I just know people yeah. were really afraid of it, almost as bad as COVID. Was, yeah, really, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It was that kind of fear. It was it was a supernatural right. fear. Uh, it was a fear that which was is also instilled by the, by the leadership. Yeah. It was a fear and yeah. a fear instilled also by leadership, not not just yeah. But yeah, it was a, it was a, they were afraid. Mm-hmm. Not so much yeah. anymore. I think I think now that everything's settled, I still bring it up again, and they're I haven't he- heard any mocking in return or whatever. I'm very yeah. careful. Who, who same might be same ready too. To I talked to my pastor yeah. about it uh, just before the, um, the Friday before I left for Australia. Uh, he came for a visit, and we talked about the twenty five twenty. Yeah, he says, I don't really see any danger in it or anything. But he says at the time, in Newfoundland, the Tabo, um, you know, definitely there was a whole group that was separating from the church over the 2520. His, uh, his dad, my pastor's uh, dad, was the pastor that baptized Tabo. Um, oh, that's neat. Yeah. They kind of walk that, that. If a characteristic I can think of to describe it is that they walked with their chin up and a chip on their shoulder, and they they wanted to get into discussions about it to prove that it was true. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And you and I weren't like that. Not right? at all, man. I was a lamb. <laughs> I didn't even know enough yeah, to I... really defend it. So I kept silent, but I had, if I was given the opportunity to prepare, but I got blindsided once in a while. Yeah, I, I me too. Same thing. Because you know, I was I wasn't agitating it or anything. But when people found out I I was studying it because I was associated with you and and all that. But anyway, so you know, getting back well, to this article. Well, hold on now. Hold on. One more point yeah. before we, if you go go on. Yeah. What is I I was the opposite. I mean, I have to admit, I was a stir stick. I. You know, I I wasn't pushing it, but I was sharing it, and I was sharing it on public media. I didn't teach it in Sabbath school. I wrote it on the board once. I didn't talk to people about it in the church, really, but no. uh, gave one or two you shared all- something here and there. But it was not, and it, you know, yeah, I wasn't pushing it. But you I shared all kinds share of things it. through emails, all kinds of different stuff yeah. from everyone, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's and you true. never got yeah, trouble yeah, for anything. everything. It wasn't just a twenty five twenty. I wasn't yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's true. Twenty five twenty was just another not just another, it was quite amazing to me. After sharing all those other things, it was kind of tied like you say, it tied things together. It it yeah. it uh it settles us in our faith, I believe, because of the yeah, cause, evidence. Cause, cause cause what well, I got from what you were doing at that time is that you were just sharing like anything that came across your path you would share your emails for people to look at what you weren't endorsing anything that you shared 
Usually, usually that's not the endorsing part, but usually I did share. But I I do remember a phone call from you after Dwayne Lemon had spoke on the twenty five twenty there in Warburg. Was it him, right? Yeah. Yeah, Dwayne and, Lemon. And you called. You called. You called me and asked me if I'd heard anything about this twenty five twenty. And yeah. I said, well, actually, yeah, a couple of years or something. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? And I. If I didn't tell you, that means I wasn't telling many. Yeah. Um, can I share yeah. uh, share experience I had with the twenty five twenty? I yeah. had a I had yeah. a um, yes, please. I had a friend. He was a medical missionary. Um, he taught you know the twenty three hundred and the twelve sixty and all in the I think the week of Christ and. And when I came to know about the twenty five twenty, he uh we were we were split up. We was in a um, ministry together and, and we had split up. And I kept in touch with him and I was texting him one time and we got to talking about the twenty five twenty and this was he, he believed that the daily was paganism and all that. I don't know if he understood completely what that meant, but but I was sharing the twenty five twenty with him and showing it to him and he he went he studied for a little bit, then we got to talk, talking about it again and he said, Well, I don't see nothing in it and I said, Well I showed him verses at the verses, you know, and and spirit of prophecy quotes and stuff where it um sheds light on it. And he told me he, he said, I don't see no light in it and if you bring it up again that I was gonna laugh at you the whole every time you brought it up. And I just, you know, I don't know what else that I could have done to share that with him. And I don't know if it's because he was, he thought he was, as you said, I reckon he thought he maybe he just was, had more knowledge than I did at the time or what. I don't know. But he just, I reckon just completely re- rejected. I don't know if he did or not. But it kind of hurt, brought it, it kind of hurt me kind of bad because he was he was saying he's going to laugh at me every time I brought it up, you know. But that's what's my experience one, one of my experiences with the 2520. But I realized then that not everybody is going to accept it, no matter what, what you show them or how you show them. Yeah, and William, my. I think that that is a, a phenomena, I like to call it. I can't explain it any other way because I, I've had similar experiences. And it's not, and it's even not that they're willfully rejecting it. They literally can't see it. And what that is or why, I'm not sure. But I hope you and your friend or whatever reconcile sometime. That would be really neat. I hope we did too, but I, I, I couldn't figure it out because he, he knew the, the, um, the, uh, the, um, argument about the daily, you know, and about that. And I couldn't figure out why, if he, if he knew about the daily, why would he be able to figure out the 2520? It just blew my mind, you know, why he couldn't understand the 2520. Yeah. That's, that. that. That is interesting how we can get some things right and somehow it doesn't carry on into the rest of everything. One of the points that I've addressed a few times, when I came into the Adventist school system, I had a teacher that had come up from another state whose family had been in the Adventist church for several generations. And he brought a copy of the 1843 and the 1850 charts into our class so that as he was teaching the Bible and Bible history, he used the charts in many ways. Now, the first prayer meeting that I went to that had anything to do with the movement, I drove up to Newport and the man that was giving the presentation was seated in front of the church. It was kind of interesting because 
for a prayer meeting, there was quite a few people that were there. So after the meeting, I walked up to him and I recognized the charts. I just asked him point blank. I said, look, I understand what you got. I see what you got here, but why are you addressing the messages here when we should be addressing the messages of 1888, righteousness by faith? And his comment back to me was, how can you address the third angel's message when you don't understand the first two angels' messages? Now, in this situation with Smith, when he's given his time to address verse 11, he's not seeing that there are two congruent 1260-day periods. Because to do so would have to be to admit that the seven times is a valid figure. Now, throughout this with Smith, I have I've observed that he is willing to accept, to, to accept a second witness to the 1260 coming out of the book of Revelation. However, he is not able to give a secondary witness to the 2300, to the 1290, or the 1335, all of which he could do if he was looking and using the 2520. To answer that question, uh, I would have been 13 to 14 years old when I first saw that's the kind of like, That's kind of like a privilege, you know? Well, it's kind of interesting to me because the person that was being so very vocal that I needed to come up for that meeting was a classmate of mine. And... I told him very bluntly that I remembered the charts because I remembered seeing them in Bible class. And he told me flat, we've never seen these charts before. This is all new. There is no way that 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 occurred. Mm -hmm. And I stood my ground and he thought that I was nuts. Well, he got talking to a former girlfriend of his and she point blank told him, that he was wrong and I was right because she remembered the charts as well. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how many of the other kids from those classes Mm -hmm. would remember that, but this was all new to me because this was within about three years of when my mom had been baptized into the church. I was being very direct with many at her memorial this last Sunday, today would have been the 54th anniversary of her baptism into the Adventist church. And Mm -hmm. when I, when I was growing up, I was being raised Lutheran, but I came to understand what it meant to be Lutheran and what it meant to be Protestant. Coming into the Adventist church, I understood very bluntly that being a Protestant meant that we were to protest Rome. Mm. Yet today we are no longer protesting Rome. In fact, in many of the Adventist churches, we are seeking a closer relationship with Rome. I'm so amazed this prophecy being fulfilled. I just never believed it would look like this. What's happening in our church today. Right. Now, as Smith wishes to continue his article, he says, we have here a new prophetic period introduced, namely 1,290 prophetic days, which would denote the same number of literal years. From the reading of the text, some have inferred, though the inference is not a necessary one, that this period begins with the setting up of the abomination of desolation or the papal power in 538 and consequently extends to 1828. But while we find nothing in that year to mark their termination, we do find evidence in the margin that they begin before the setting up of the papal abomination. The margin reads 
to set up the abomination. With the reading, the text would stand thus. And from the time that the daily shall be taken away to set up or in order to set up the abomination that maketh desolate, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. The daily has already been shown to be not the daily sacrifice of the Jews, but the daily or continual abomination, that is, paganism. Here he gives reference to chapter 813. This had to be taken away to prepare the way for the papacy. For the historical events showing how this was accomplished in 508, see Daniel 1131. We are not told directly to what event these 1290 days reach, but inasmuch as their commencement is marked by a work which takes place to prepare the way for the setting up of the papacy, it would be most natural to conclude that their end would be marked by the cessation of papal supremacy. Counting back then, 1,290 years from 1798, we have the year 508, where it has been shown that paganism was taken away 30 years before the setting up of the papacy. This period is doubtless given to show the date or the taking away of the daily. And it is only one, the only one which does this. The two periods, therefore, therefore, of 1290 and 1260 days terminate together in 1798. The one beginning in 538 and the other in 508, 30 years previous. Now. Okay. So, um, uh, can I make a comment? Please, please. So, um, so we looked at this already and, and, and we noted that uh, Smith isn't isn't presenting this the way that Miller would have presented it, right? Because Miller was given 508. He wasn't given 538, right? He has these. Because remember, we talked about this yesterday, dealing with there was basically three prophetic periods that Miller, um, and four if you count the 70 weeks, but three prophetic periods that end in 1843. That is the 2520, uh, the 2300 days, and the 1335. And so he, he gives those dates. And, and Ellen White quotes that um, uh, these, there's two paragraphs. There, and it's interesting, they're on page uh, 74 of um, William Miller's um, memoirs, right? The memoirs of William Miller, page 74. So that's the book written by Bliss. Right. And and um, and I think it was actually started by uh, um, Apollos Hale, and then Bliss finished it, if I remember correctly. Uh, but but anyway, it's on page 74. And of course, page 74 is important because that's page 74 of early writings, where she's going to talk about uh, the daily, for instance, right? The pioneers, correct understanding of the daily. Anyway. Ellen White quotes these two paragraphs. Well, she paraphrases one of them in the Great Controversy, and the other one she quotes in its entirety, except that she excises uh, the reference to uh, the 65 years um, prophecy. So it's going to list up all these different time prophecies, and she's going to excise that 65 years, um, which is a very interesting point, why she takes it out in quoting Miller. Uh, but has all of these other periods, and then uh, and then she's she's going to talk about the various prophetic periods um, when she paraphrases him, and he's going to be referring to the seven times continuous, the 2,300 days uh, for the cleansing of the sanctuary, and the 1,335 um, uh, I can't remember what how he characterizes it but anyway those those three periods so they're very important this understanding that miller had regarding those periods and they're all tied together in his mind because he first comes to understand 1843 based upon the 2520 right then when he gets the 2300 days and he finds it ends also in 1843 and then he gets the 1335, and it also ends in 1843. 
then that to him sort of settles the issue. He has the two or three witnesses pointing to 1843. But these are all now set aside at this time. And um, Dana had, or not Dana, uh, Angela had mentioned, she read about Dana there. Um, Angela had mentioned uh, that, you know, we had in December 6, 2020, FFA is going to write their declaration uh, rejecting the symbolic use of numbers. And and it is January 26, 1864, that that article was written or published, uh, rejecting Leviticus 26. And I think there is, both of them represent the 126. Obviously, January 26 was 126. And December 6 is 126. And they're going to be 150. Uh, uh, 56 years apart in a month or so, right? So, so there's something here about that that if Adventists could see this, if they if they understood what it was they were rejecting, I don't think they would reject it. But they just don't understand it, and I don't think Uriah Smith understands it. He could have understood it, you know. But but I just don't think you know it's it's you know to me there is God is hiding it just as He hid the mistake on the 1843 charge, right? So we know that He held His hand over the 1843 charge. The mistake is in the top right hand corner, right? On the bottom of the chart, 1843 is not a mistake. But on the top right hand corner. When you have the 2300 days ending in 1843 and the 2528 ending in 1843, there is a mistake on the chart. But since that hand was held over that mistake, I think the hand was also held over the 2520. And it's in our history that that hand is removed in regard to the 2520 for us to see it. That kind of makes sense. I was, I was going to ask who, how did the twenty five twenty, how did, who was it that decided what went on the chart, on the two charts? Was it the individual? Okay, so on the eighteen forty three chart, there was actually another chart that was made first. Um, sometimes people referred to it as the eighteen forty two chart. No, they both ended in eighteen forty three, and they're both made in eighteen forty two, and that chart had. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember. It had the the, the 2,450 uh, years, so it had the Great Jubilee, the 2,300, and the 2,520 on it. There was three parallel lines. It, it's it's a black and white chart. It wasn't a colored chart. But they had a copy of it at the School of the Prophets in the office on the wall framed. Um, I, I think has everybody seen that chart? I'm, I'm pretty sure I that I saw it. I don't recall it. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's just, and it shows them like, sort of like how we draw out our charts. It has like the, the, you know, the, the timeline drawn up and then the spans with these uh, sort of arches going from the beginning to the end. So, so these charts, um, and there's three lines, separate lines. So, I so then they decided to make that one. the 1843 chart. What's that? I do remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, and then they, yeah. And then they just commissioned this other chart, which instead of having the line going horizontally, they chose to have the 25 20 line going as a vertical column down to the center of the chart um, with, the, with, the, with the images of, uh, you know, of Daniel and Revelation on. On the other sides of the chart, and so they're going to have Daniel on the left side, basically, and not quite exactly that way, but Revelation on the right side, um, and they're going to have the woes and all that. Um, so that's that's what happened. They made 300 of those charts, and um, so th those charts are first going to be presented. Stephen, do you remember the chronology? Stephen's still there. Do you remember the chronology of span? from when the charts were first 
uh, presented at the camp meeting, uh, where they ended? Was it, there's 187 days in there or some kind of span of time. I can't remember what it was. Do you remember, Stephen? Um, I think it was 666 days from oh, the, okay. from when the, the, the charts were uh, advertised to be published to yeah. to the end of their their usefulness in a sense, not total usefulness, but uh, to the end of their end of the year 1843. So right, 18, to April 19th. Yeah. Yes. So I think that's it. Was it was just uh, ready? They were there for the East Kingston camp meeting. I think that was on the twenty fifth of June, and they were sort of sending out advertisements about it. I think about three, three or four days beforehand. It was uh, they weren't quite ready yet, but they were kind of like uh, near enough. I think that's my remember. I have to check it out. Yeah, I, I I I just remember there were spans of time connected to their publishing and to uh, where they marks at the end of the prophetic periods that they're marking. So anyway, so the 1843 chart uh, has the mistake, though, in the top right-hand corner. So when God held his hand over the chart, uh, it's going to cover the 1843 ending the 2300 days and the 1843 ending the 2520. But the 1843 at the bottom is actually marking the 1335 and the 1290. Well, connected to the 1290. So the 45 years between the 1290 and the 1335 days. So the math there is correct and it's not affected by the mistake on the chart. Um, does that kind of help answer your question, Kelly? So it's going to be... Uh, Charles Fitch, is it who makes the chart? Yeah, Fitch, and then the second one was. But anyway, well, yeah, Nichols. no, that 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 fills in a lot of blanks or refreshes me. Yeah, the 1850 chart's going to be um, what's the guy's name? Ot Otis Nichols. Nichols, yeah. Right, anyway, brother Nichol. Yeah. 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 So the Nichols chart. Now, that one's called the 1850 charts because it's made in 1850. The other one's called the 43 chart because it ends in 43. It's made in 42. Okay. So, so Fitch and Nichols, the first first yeah. chart was fit. So, yeah. but, but was there, was there a, a committee or anything that the chart was passed by to say, yes, this goes mm -hmm. on or not? Not That's really. Kind of what yeah, I wondered official or, yeah. committee, the they just decide to do just it. Just gather the individual, just gathered the information themselves and Fitch and the other yeah, guy. Yeah, they just, yeah. They just and then put it on there. Yeah, not an official thing. Hmm. Just they decided to do yeah. it. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was funded. Well, wasn't, wasn't the second chart uh, almost commissioned by the Whites? Like they encouraged Tim Nichols to well, do it? Yeah. Ellen White said that another chart needed to be made, yes. So that's why. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they made 300 of the 1850 charts as well. Uh, they made 300 of the 1843 chart? Yeah. Both. There's 300 okay. copies made. Interesting. In each Interesting. Yeah. The yeah. 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 300. All right. Any other recollections on? when we first came to viewing and understanding these charts. I read most of the comments in the chats. I noted the post of what I recall from seeing at FFA of the line drawing chart, which we could apply as being the 1842 chart. Now, one, one that comes to mind, Dwight, is uh, an experience of a friend that introduced me to the 2520. Peter Plum, he knew about the 2520 and the correct understanding of the daily since 80, the 80s? Okay. 1989. Yeah. 1989. And he had a yeah. chart in his room and he looked up and saw the 2520 and looked into it. And yeah, he, he figured those things out long, so long ago. And he was teaching me. And when, when he was sharing it with me, um, in 2008 or 10, 11. Anyway, he'd come over and I would fall asleep. 
and it would be just me and him and he'd have like an armload of books like Dwayne Dewey would carry around right. and sit down and I'd, I'd fall asleep <laughs> in the end he'd say okay we're done and he'd just keep going but uh, I woke up when Theodore called me I knew about it but I didn't really study it much when Theodore asked me if I knew about it I thought well this must be important I guess I should look into it more myself I up until then I hadn't done with it no go ahead I found it interesting back let's say well this would be now about 14 close to 14 years ago I was spending some time with a lady down in New Mexico and her family had been Adventist for quite a while. It was the first time, other than from the meetings that I had been attending, that I had run into to someone that had a copy of the 1843 chart. And I remember being on the telephone with her, and we were talking about the charts. And I knew right where the 1843 chart was in her house. As we were addressing the situation, she said to me on the phone, this 2520 has nothing to do with the charts. And I, I asked her very nicely, I said, how can you say that? Since 2520 is prominent in the upper right corner of the 1843 chart. And she kept arguing with me that no it isn't there is no way that it's there there it, it's just not and then all of a sudden she stopped and stated it is there so oh, wow it's it's surprising that someone that has had this in their possession available to them would in many ways, be quite myopic as to its existence. So, now, the thing that comes to mind is in seeing the shall not see or something like that. Right. I cannot see. Now, the situation that I've encountered is many whose family, like the Bible teacher that introduced me to the charts so many years ago, one of his sons was in my class, and after his father had passed, he was very adamant about how the 2520 is not important and refused to have anything to do with anything that gave credence to the importance of the seven times of Leviticus 26. It's sad because there are many especially within the church that have chosen to refuse to study their history. They want to believe that the message that is to be given as the third angel's message has to do strictly with the Sabbath. Yet how does Mrs. White say this? We have no new message except for that which was given in 1841, 42, 43, and 44 that brought us out of the apostate churches. When was it that the Sabbath became a point that was seen as being important to the Millerite movement? Do you know? Sorry, I missed that question, Dwight. When was it that the Sabbath became a point that became important to the Millerite movement? And wasn't it in like March 1844? I believe we will find that the Sabbath was not being agitated until 1846. Well, you had uh, Frederick Wheeler, okay. and then you have the Seventh-day Baptist lady sort of approach him and uh, ag agitate him. Yeah, Rachel Oaks. Rachel Preston Oaks. Yes. So my understanding is like March 1844 is when Frederick Leader then as a Adventist, Millerite, began to be uh, convicted of that. But was this one of the messages that brought them out of the churches? No. Right. 
So my point is, if I'm looking strictly at the verbiage that Mrs. White has used, the messages from 1841 to 1844 are the messages that are to be given now, meaning reliance upon the prophetic message, the numbers, so that we can then more purely and properly present to people the importance of the Sabbath. So from here, Smith gives the 1290 this entire paragraph. There's very little else that he has had to say about this. As he continues, he comes to verses 12 and 13. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred five and thirty days. But thou, but go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Okay, so I'm looking. Okay, from the chat, the comment is made. Chronological chart of the visions of Daniel and John. It is now nearly finished and will be ready for delivery in a few days. Price 250 a copy to subscribers. Published at number 14 Devonshire Street. Upstairs, subscribers may send or call soon. Signs of the Times, June 22nd, 1842. 9.96, 666 days to the last day of the Hebrew year, 1843. Sunset on the 18th of April of 1844. It's interesting that Signs of the Times in 1842 published 47 years before the birth of my grandmother in Sarata, what was then Russia, but is Bessarabia. Yeah, we also have the June 22nd date, which, of course, we know is the date that Jeff picked in uh, uh, 2011. Oh, he didn't pick it. I mean, that's when he received $165,000. And um, then the June 22nd date in 2014 that he connected with the first camp meeting in Arkansas after they had the School of the Prophets. So that June 22nd date also in Millerite history is going to be uh, Pentecost in 1844. You know, so it's, it's another symbol. So it ties these different symbols together. But see, it has a it has a very personal reference for me because June 22nd, 1889 was the birth of my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Just like February 11th, 1928 was the birth of my mother. Okay. So Stephen's birthday. Exactly. So when I'm looking at their birth dates and then joining it with, with the date of my birth, I've had to shake my head because then I've got three generations directly that have birth dates that have something to do within the movement. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, Stephen, I thought there was also another span of time going to the midnight cry, going to August. Um, Maybe it was, um, I'm just trying to think how many days it was. Maybe it was 718 days or something like that from some event, a camp meeting or something. Um, yeah, I think it was the, uh, the time difference between the camp meetings. So you had the East Kingston uh, camp meeting until the Exeter camp meeting, ah, which, right. were, which were only like five miles apart or something in their venue. And wasn't it uh, 777 days? So, yes, that's right. And then 780 days to, uh, I think, maybe 781 days to August 15th. So it, it put in the 777 and the 781, I think. But but I, um, but I can't remember. Exactly. But I, I, I thought there was 777 days in there. So there was, uh, yeah. So from the first color, from the, all right, okay, the, the East Kingston camp meeting began on the 28th of June, 1842. Okay. And then it was uh, 777 days in an ordinal count to the 12th of August, 1844. 
where the extra coming right, which weekend, starts the camp meeting. Yes, but then it's going to be like yeah. an hour three days until the fifteenth of August, uh, with yeah. the Samuel Snow presenting the Midnight Cry. So that would be from that first camp meeting when that began would be 780 days with an inclusive count. So you have 18,720 18, hours from that coming. Yeah, so the 18,720 hours, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully people catch that. So, yeah, it's just really interesting, this uh, this question regarding the charts. Okay. So, Dwight, back to you. Okay, so here we come to these final verses. Now. Smith's comment here, still another prophetic period is here introduced, denoting 1,335 years. The testimony concerning this period, like that which pertains to the 1,290 years, is very meager. Can we tell when they will begin or end? The only clue we have to the solution of this question is the fact that they are spoken of in immediate connection with the 1,290 years, which commenced as shown above in 508. From that point, there shall be, says the prophet, 1,290 days. And the very point, the very next sentence reads, Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the 1,335 days. From what point? From the same undoubtedly as that from which the 1,290 day, namely 508. Unless they are to be reckoned from this point, it is impossible to locate them. And they must be accepted from the prophecy of Daniel, which we apply it when we apply it to the words of Christ. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Matthew 24, 15. From this point, they would extend to 1843, for 1335 added to 508 makes 1843. Commencing in the spring of the former year, they end in the spring of the latter. Now, what mistake is Smith making here? Yeah, that's kind of an odd mistake. Right? So he's saying that they're in the spring of 508? Right. Same. Okay. And that's something we still have to really sort out, is 508 and 538. 538 especially. We have 508 now because we know it's December 25th, 508, the baptism of Clovis. 538, I normally mark around March time. That's when the siege ended. So they also got off, he's using? So, so they also got abandoned the siege in, I think it was in March, 538. Okay, so that's what he's doing. But we know it's going to be in um, April. So so he's using the, the spring, the March. So it's it's going to be April that, that uh, 1843 ends, or that, yeah, the Jewish year, 1843 ends in April, not in March. Some other point, Dwight? Well, what he's saying here, commencing in the spring of the former year, they end in the spring of the latter. He's correct in that this would need to end in the spring of 1844, but he's not seeing it as such because he's stating that this is ending in the spring of 1843. Right, which which is which is incorrect. Yeah, because it ends in the spring of 1844. So why does he have it in the, in the spring of 1843, not at the end of 1843? Yeah, that. You follow now what I'm what I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah. Does that be uh, the end in the spring in? Because it ends in the spring of 1844, not in the spring of 1843. Right. So he was trying to place the commencement in the spring of 1842 and the conclusion in the spring of 1843. When well, well, no, I think what he does is when he says the former and the latter, um, I think he means the former is 508 and the latter is 1843. All right. So, but that, that still would be incorrect, even even if it started in the spring of 508, which I don't believe that's where we start the 1335. And I, I don't think you have to have it exact anyway, but 
we have it start in December 25th, 508, with the baptism of Clovis. And if you did exactly 1335, it would end in December 25th, um, you know, uh, 1843. But we know that it, it goes to the end of the Jewish year, 1843, not to some date from 508 to some date in 1843, which he's trying to go from the spring of 508 to the spring of 1843. We, we don't have the 1335 end in the spring of 1843. Now, he could be arguing that the 1335 just goes to the beginning of the Jewish year, 1843, which, which Miller does mark, right? I don't know that any of the pioneers had the 1335 end in the spring of 1843. I don't think that was understood in that way. Definitely, we don't take it that way. We go to the end of the Jewish year 1843 because Miller was always about the Jew about the year 1843, and then he said that the Jewish year 1843. So when the 1842 1843 chart is made in 1842. It's going to be May or June, right? Right. Um, and when they have 1843 on that chart, it's going from, in their mind, January 1st, 1843 to December 31st, 1843. In December of 1842, Miller, for the first time, says that 1843, in his mind, is the Jewish year 1843, Going from March 21st, 1843 to March 21st, 1844. So prior to that, they never ad addressed the Jewish year um, as 1843. So, so then they're going to, in the year 1843, they're going to be looking into the whole issue of exactly when the prophetic period ends. And we know in May 2nd of 1843, Miller's going to write uh, a letter, I believe, to Himes. I'm not sure who he writes it to, um, where he talks about the, the the fall of the year in connection with the Day of Atonement. That that's when the prophetic, that's when he would expect that the prophetic periods are going to end. So he's going to have the fall of 1843. Now, during that year in 1843, they're going to sort out that there is no zero year and that um, they talk it, so they talk about the fact that it's going to be actually 1844 but they still aren't looking to the fall of the year in 1844 they're still going to look to the spring so they're going to say well they're going to continue to to may 21st 1843 and then they refine it um using a misunderstanding of the Karite calendar, but uh, that the Karites always go one month later than the rabbins. But um, so, so they say it's going to be, um, uh, you know, April 18th, 1844. Um, sometimes they say April 17th, because they're just going by the astronomical new moon. But, but it, anyway, the Jewish year ends on April 18th at sunset in 1844. So, so the 1335 has to end at the end of the Jewish year 1843, not at the beginning of the Jewish year 1843, right? If you understand what I'm saying. And of course, it's addressing uh, um, this sort of tarrying time that happens and the blessing that comes then comes with an acceptance of this chronology. So if you think about there's you know 500,000 Millerites uh, prior to the spring of 1844, and many are disappointed. So you end up with 50,000 Millerites after the spring of 1844. So with the first disappointment, it, it's diminished by, um, you know, so you only have one-tenth left of the people that were Millerites. And those people um, would have accepted April 19th. The ones who are disappointed, for the most part, that leave the movement, 
we never accept that adjusted date of April April 19th as being the first day of the first month. That is, the first day of the first month being April 19th is only understood by the Millerites who accept the tarrying time. That is, in order to accept April 19th, that means you accept October 22nd. Right? So many people fell away before that. They 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 were disappointed, not particularly on April 19th, though some were, that that disappointment wasn't really um, a singular event. That disappointment actually happens over a period of time. Um, some people even argue that, you know, um, by December 31st, 1843, many people had left the movement um, because Miller's, in their understanding of it, 1843 had passed. Right. You have some who are still going to hang on till the spring of 1843, but only up to March 21st. And then, the, and even even within this movement, um, when did we first understand that it was April 19th and not, not March 21st that, that the first disappointment happened? That's not going to be until um, 2014, maybe 2013, um, that we understand that. The first disappointment that the first day of the first month is actually April 19th, not March 21st. And you'll find all kinds of Adventist sources saying that, you know, the first day of the first month, they have their first disappointment is March 21st in 1844. But of course, it was for some people, but that's not the first day of the first month if October 22nd is the 10th day of the seventh month. So I think it's it's rather interesting. Just um, understanding these details that the movement has has brought to light. So yeah, so this would just go over most people's heads when they're just reading what what Smith says here. They're not really going to understand, and it doesn't seem like Smith that really understands the 1335. Yeah, and Stephen put that chart there so you can see the uh, the camp meeting. The first Millerite camp meeting in East Kingston beginning June 28th. I don't know. You should bring that up on the uh, – share that on the screen, Dwight. I'm, I'm so trying. So people watching the video can see it. So you just have to unshare what you have, or you can do a new share, I guess. I was trying to do a new share. Okay. So give me a moment. Now, I don't know if this is entirely readable. Okay, so that's the 1842 chart, right? And then Stephen has the other chart, um, another chart there as well to share. Okay, right. so this pictorial chart of Daniel's visions. So, right. Um, so that that's um, that was just briefly there on the screen. That's the one we were referring to, the black and white chart. Right. And then Stephen made the chart, the other chart. So yeah, so you're going to see that you got the. Um, uh, so there's more to that chart than I, than I actually thought, because it's going to have the 666 years in there as well, connecting to the 1335. And in this chart, um, with the, the first Millerite camp meeting at East Kingston beginning June 28, 1842, 777 days to the Exeter camp meeting beginning August 12, 1844, and then the 780 days the Samuel Snow presenting the true midnight cry on August 15, 1844. So again, we have that symbol for July 18, 2020, with the 780 days, so the 18,720 hours. Um, so these are ordinal counts. But the, uh, thanks for sharing that, Stephen and Dwight. The 1842 chart that uh, you have there, so um, Ellen might actually, I believe, references that. Um, in the 1850, she writes, I think, uh, on our return to Brother Nichols, the Lord gave me a vision and showed me that the truth must be made of plain and from tables, and it would cause many to decide for the truth by the third angel's message. And then she says, with the two former being made plain upon tables. So she's uh, advocating another chart. And uh, she's saying the two other former ones, so I'd understand that would be that one, 1842, the black and white one, and 
the 1843. It seemed to give some credibility to some level, maybe not the same emphasis as was put upon the 1843 chart. But the... Yeah. But yeah, it definitely does lend credibility to this chart that it's it's a valid chart. So this one has all these different spans of time, sort of how we draw the charts now, um, showing showing the daily uh, that is 666 years for for Rome. Uh, of course, it's going to start in 677, just like the 1843 chart does uh, for that first line. Um, so that's going to be the 2520, and it's going to have these different divisions. Uh, the 1335 being there and the 666. And then uh, you're going to have, um, uh, let me see, I'm just looking at here. So you got the, the 2520, then you have the 1260. So they have three and a half times times 12 times 42 times, or equals 42 times 30, which equals 1260. And then they have that calculation for the 1843. And then there's another, I can't see the, the bottom part of it here. Um, so we're just seeing the top part of it, right? So right. there should be three lines, isn't there? Or is there just two lines like that? No, there's... Oh, there we go. Oh, I see. So then we got, yeah. So, and then we have the, on the bottom, it's gonna be, so you got the 2300 years, and the center one is the Jubilees, right? Okay. The 2,450 years. Yep. Yeah, I think it is pretty interesting, though, that, you know, this chart draws the lines with the way that we do. But the 1843 and 1850 chart chose to draw it vertically rather than horizontally. And um, I wonder if there's any significance in that. I think it's something for us to consider, and let's address this further when we come back to meet on Sunday. Yeah. It's also interesting if you're if you're looking in the area just above this portion that says Papal 1260, Papal Rome 1260 years, they have the 538, 1260, and 45 all adding up to 1843. So they were recognizing or beginning to recognize what would be the validity of 1844. They just didn't fully understand all this, especially when you, when you have off to the side there, three and a half times by 12 being 42 multiplied by 30, 30 prophetic days to being 1,260. And at the very top, you have exactly what they had in the upper right corner of the 1843 chart, 7 by 12 by 84, 7 by 12 by equaling 84 multiplied by 30, still coming out to the 2520. Yeah, so the right hand of both, uh, the right top right corner of both charts had a hand over the mistake. Right. The same place on the chart, yeah. Really so interesting. Well, this is a pretty good uh, discussion uh, going over this history. I think it's very, very profitable. Okay. Any other thoughts Amen. or comments at this time? Okay. Shall we then close with the prayer? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for this, this conversation, this time of study, and for all of the input that has come forth from it. We praise you, Father, that you are opening our minds to help us to understand this history so that we might understand better the work that is yet before us. Direct us now, guide us, show us that which you would have us to understand. Be with us each through our days. Help us to gain rest and to be prepared to do the work that you would have us to do. Thank you for this time. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.